In the late 1950s, there was a man by the name of Ray Tapia. Many of you probably don't know who he is, but he was one of the most dangerous men in America. He was put in solitary confinement for the, most of his duration in the state penitentiary, but one day a new warden came along, and on his first day talked to Ray Tapia and said, Ray, I'm giving you a second chance, and actually released Ray a few years later, when he was supposed to say many years after that. After rehab and other things, Ray has now become one of the great outstanding citizens of America as he reaches into his late 80s now. And he's retired and has money to retire. Um, now in America, the prison systems give way too long of a sentence and the uh, no rehab is ever available, uh, making inmates dangerous when they come back. Today I'll speak about the problems with the prison system, uh, what's causing these issues, and the solutions of how to fix these problems. According to, uh, the first issue is the overcrowdedness of the prison. According to the Government Accountability Office in a report in 2013 on HuffingtonPost.com, 1.6 million U.S. citizens are currently in prison, which is 39% more than the capacity of, the, of where they're supposed to be at. And by 2018, it's projected to be a 45% more. There's not enough rooms, but the issue isn't the amount of rooms, it's the amount of people that needs to go down. It's already, it, uh, some people say we need to fix this before it gets out of hand, but in my opinion, this issue is already completely and totally out of hand. The second issue that I'll speak about is the rate of returning inmates. According to a PW article from 2003 to 2007, made it the most comprehensive prison analysis ever conducted, over 52% of inmates return now before five years of being released. And in the state of California alone, it's 70%, which is the highest in the nation. That's over half of prisoners returning in the next five years or less. This is, this is staggering. It costs not only the prisoners, but costs the country in general more than it needs to do and we need to show improvement. The issue is real, and while there's no signs of improvement, I think that we need to understand the causes to know how we can approach this issue here in America. Oh. Some, some people are dangerous and threats to society. According to the, to the EJI.net in 2012 in this article, there's over 3,170 people on death row today. These are not the people that I'm concerning. According to the core decisions, not my own, these people are considered dangerous to America and they need to be kept away. However, there's other people who are on the right path and can be changed. According to an article by Metro Lyric in 2009, Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has those days. These would be the people. <laughs> these would be the people that need that can be changed and need to be changed and are causing overcrowdedness in our prisons. This would almost act as a filter, I guess. Some people say that a good filter to keep good people back on the roads is parole. But the last thing a parolee is is free. They have to live life living with the cops breathing down their neck because any slight uh, issue to send them right back five to ten years in jail for something that would be a fine for just a normal citizen. People that aren't dangerous need rehab, preparing for a new life, but this isn't sought out ever. Some people will go through, so prison gives you a mental and physical toll from prison and you just can't come back from that to be a normal citizen right afterwards. It's impossible to get a job it's also hard to be accepted by society after you've been after you've been a convicted felon. Nobody wants to hire you. Accor um, according to the Encyclopedia Britannica in 2013, the approach focuses on punishment and personal reform, uh, which is the two purposes of prison. But I only see one of them being done, which is punishment. Uh, however, West Virginia is trying to make trying to help with proposing a bill that that would help this issue at least give us a good start. West Virginia, uh, in West Virginia, a bill on April 22nd, 2013 was produced called the Second Chance Act, and otherwise known in West Virginia, Senate Bill 371. This, this would give dangerous inmates a year of rehab after their sentence, and undangerous inmates six months off of their sentence to go to rehab. This would do two things, it would help vote. It would lower the number of inmates in prison, and it would create people that are ready to be back on the streets when they come back out. It would make it easier to give them a job, 
because employers would know that at least the person, they might be a convicted felon, but at least they're trying to get back on the right track. Um, now, how you can help them. It's really easy. All you have to do <coughs> is contact your local <coughs> and try to get um, push for a bill to go in the state of Tennessee. It could really impact people's lives more than you think it could. Today I've discussed the problems, causes, and solutions of the prison system today and, uh, and in our country. We saw how a man, even as dangerous as Ray Tapia, can be transformed into a great citizen that uh, really helps his country in positive ways and can completely be changed. Um, what's, going, and what's going on today in our prison system is wrong. And after I did my own research and found out how I thought about it, I realized that this topic really affected me and changed the way that I view the prison system. Um, and I hope that maybe it did for you too. Good night. God bless. The West Town will hear that. From what? 559.